Hello, everybody. Nice to have you here today. Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Abdullah Vahri. I work in the Abu Dhabi government in the United Arab Emirates, and I work on blockchain initiatives and cybersecurity strategies for the uh, Abu Dhabi government. So my story goes way back in 2013 when I started uh, creating two blockchain concepts. One was, was the digital identity, and anybody here who went to the United Arab Emirates heard of this app called UAE Pass, which I created personally back in the day. Moving on, creating internetless transaction that can happen through low orbiting satellites within fractions of a second to send data and monetary values right now being used also in the government by border to border payments where we launched the CBDCs. So I'm here today to talk about what is Web3 in the UAE, especially in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. A lot of companies you guys here tend to come right now and we all hear about people saying, oh, it's, we are friendly regulated companies onboarding, no taxes and these things, which is all true. But my perspective is why people should come to the UAE and where is it very intrigued for people to come. So why blockchain to us is a priority, first of all. Blockchain has many benefits, and I'm not here today to sit and say that uh, this is what we can do and change it and decentralize or for the people, which is true also, but blockchain helps in many ways within the strategy of the country itself. So in 2018, we launched the strategy of blockchain initiative that we have to accomplish by 2021 which helped further us by sustainability, security development, and scaling the digital transformation within the country itself. From that, we have saved billions and billions of dollars from paperless transaction and all of these criteria that have scaled us up a lot in this region with our goals of 2050 and 2071. So today, many people might ask is that the United Arab Emirates is scaling so fast and we are putting in a lot of development. I can tell you right now by 2026, we have the goal to become 100% on the blockchain technology. From payments infrastructure, the metaverse scalability, and also having transaction on chain, whether it's being healthcare transaction or birth certificates on chain or even passports itself which we would be introducing by next year, beginning of next year. So to us is that we will try to scale and we will always support companies from having an investment uh, support, onboarding users to the United Arab Emirates and having projects to come there. And we would not put a certain stop of telling people is that, no, you can't uh, deal or create securities or no, we don't want you guys to do these types of things because of a regulatory framework. We even have some type of uh, regula regulation laws that would help certain companies that, for example, how can I say this? It's, um, peop let's say things that are not even regulated all around the world. We would use some kind of MVP license, minimal viable product license, where people can test their products for three months and if it's good, why not? You know, we would care, create certain laws for those companies itself. We would never put a stop for companies' innovation. We would never delay a company growth. We would always support their innovation financially, adoption, and make them scale bigger. And hopefully within the next 10 years, our goal is to become the tech hub from around the world. And I didn't prepare something very big to speak about today. It's just I wanted people to know, and if anybody have also questions here, make it a bit interactive about what you guys would like to see even for us and what you guys have any questions about the industry itself. If anybody has any questions here or anything. Can you repeat your question again? Yes, so if there's going to be a wallet for the future, okay, maybe uh, in Europe they have the development of the e-wallet, okay, where they're going to be using different payment methods, or for example,
different certificates of their healthcare, their experience in employment, or their uh, school degree. So if there is something similar in the UAE, or yeah. it's going to be a development of something uh, of that. We already have something like that, which I said, uh, something called the UAE Pass that we all tend to use, that use blockchain technology in the back end. Let's say if someone goes to a hospital, you tend to know that people in the hospital ask you like, oh, give me your ID card to have your registration and everything. But for us, it's quite different is that, let's say the hospital puts your ID card number, you get a notification automatically on your app, you sign the message and that's guaranteed. Boom, boom, it's there. So we already have an app developed that has all of your uh, information in it, your passport, your certificates, experience, all in one place. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions or anything? Yes. What about the Middle East and uh, Dubai? Do you have some education program for the user or? Yeah, this is my question. We yeah. are currently in developing that progress of education programs uh, right now with the universities and Ministry of Education. There are some programs uh, by the regulators, like in Abu Dhabi, you guys heard of Abu Dhabi Global Markets, ADGM and Dubai by VARA. So there are some kind of programs that are being launched, but we have, we do actually have a plan to have even degrees within universities to teach about these things, Web3 and the, uh, DeFi, all of these kinds of criteria. We are in development of that. The guy back there had a question. So it's a really simple question. If I were to launch something and I want to go to a UAE, uh, who do I need to reach or any organization and stuff like that, basically? Depends which city are you going to go to. I don't know. Just Dubai or Abu Dhabi? Let's say Dubai. <laughs> Let's say in Dubai there are the Dubai Future Foundation program and VARA themselves. They have certain programs to onboard startups themselves and even support them, like I said, financially, adoption, scaling, opening bank accounts, and all of these things. And uh, in Abu Dhabi? In Abu Dhabi, we have right now Hub 71. Thank you. Thank you. So my question was basically this one, the previous one, but um, what's the general uh, regulation framework as of now in, uh, in, the, in the Emirates regarding Red 3? Because we've seen a lot of uh, frameworks going on in Europe with MICA, etc. So, what's uh we have certain frameworks in place uh, for major companies that want to come into these things, especially on the tokenization uh, aspects for that. But we actually tend to have license for each kind of activity on Web3 right now. Even like I said, we do not have an issue with real world tokenization assets or securities themselves. We tend to support these kinds of initiatives, you know, and even like to set up these things, we don't have take six months or nine months f to do these things. Maximum, if it's delayed because of paperwork, or it might take one month by max. So we are open to everything. Like I said, we even have test license for people to create some things, and it's the period of that is three months. If everything goes well, we launch it later. Does anybody else have any questions? Or? Thank you. When you mean that you're launching something, what, what do you mean by that? That uh, you're just gonna, mm, like you're gonna make it happen? Just you go to, let's say Dubai, you, you launch a project. Well, when you're launching, you mean you're gonna invest it, you're gonna support it? What is it that you, as an entity, are gonna do for project developers? So for project, that's an important question. So when we mean by support, we have uh, the programs that the guys asked about. So we have certain programs where we do give grants 
for startups, and we do also tend to invest and scale within our portfolio of investment of sovereign wealth funds. So you guys might heard of uh, Phoenix Capital that did their mining operation and all of these things within the UAE. We supported them to the extent of a scale that we made them go IPO within the market itself. So we can support to the reason of, like I said, financially by grants, by investing in them, supporting them by giving them co-working spaces or even office spaces for big, big major companies within the region itself. So we have certain programs for each category. Yes. Companies itself, yes. yes. So I thank everybody here for coming. Uh, sorry for my short speech. Just wanted to tend everybody. Make it a bit more interactive. And thank you so much.